In the last little section, we went over the basics of the color correction tools that we have. But what if you want to just change part of a color? Meaning that I don't want to go in and change the entire clip and all the attributes of it. I just want to pick a certain color or range of colors and be able to work on that. The chrominance filter, which is basically our secondary color correction tool here in EDIUS, is how we can achieve that. Now, if you'll take a look up here on the screen, I've got this shot up here, and to be perfectly honest with you, it's a little dull because the sky kind of just starts to blend in with the mountains. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the snow caps, you know, it would just look like a darker version of the exact same color on it. So I want to separate it out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here once again into my video filters, find chrominance, and I'm going to pull chrominance down on this shot right here. And sure enough, along with my stabilizer and layouter, the chrominance filter shows up. I'm going to double click on it right here, and here's my shot. Now I have a choice here. I can pick the color picker, or I can go through and pick different shapes to be able to pick a range of colors. Let's just try the color picker at first. And I'm just going to click one or two times up here in the blue, or the semi-blue, gray, whatever you want to call it. Now, I can affect in here the inside of the filter, meaning anything that Color Picker just picked, the edge of the filter, or the outside of the filter. So I'm going to go to the inside of the filter, and the first thing I'm going to do is pick Block Color. And the reason I'm going to do that is because of the fact that it will allow me to see exactly what has been affected. And as you can see, the mountains have kind of been affected here, and I really don't want to change the mountains that much. I'm really looking more just to do the sky. And so basically, I'm going to come in instead of using the color picker, and I could try the color picker another couple of times just to see in different spots to see if that would help. Oh, that, that's even worse, of course. That one's a little bit better, and as I get up higher, it's a little better on the mountains, but you can see that it kind of lacks down in here a tad bit. So just to show you how else to work on this, I'm going to go in and pick a range. Now, if I come down and say show histogram then what that's going to do for me is it's going to show me the entire color range. And as you can see, it's not really huge on this. And here is my oval shape that I can pull out. And as I start to cover it, you can see. Now what I've done is, is I've affected everything except for that little point right there. And I just barely touched something on the mountain right there. But you can see that the mountains are untouched, the lake is untouched, and so is the ground. So now that I've seen where that is, I'm going to go in and change this off of block color. And I'm going to go into color balance instead. And then I'm going to go into the setup of my color balance. And I've got the shots basically side by side here, but I'll do a side by side again so you can see it. And I'm just going to pull up my value on my chroma. And look what I've done. So now, going into this, I have, and if I can get, get out of my window here, because, whoops, these windows get a little bit large on this small screen. Now you can see the real difference between the two. The mountains have remained basically the same. The lake has remained basically the same. The ground is basically the same. Everything's the same. But now I have a lot bluer sky sitting over that mountain than I had before. And so I'm happy with this, so I'm going to go ahead and just say, okay. And I can just play it. Now, one of the things I want you to understand and realize is, is that I am playing this with a stabilizer on it and with chrome when it's done on it, and there was no background rendering done at all here. It's just playing in real time and playing full frame, full resolution in real time, period. And so it makes it very easy for me to be able to see exactly what it is I've done, and so there I have this example of chrome when it's right there. Now, if I want to do a little bit more drastic change, in other words, I don't want to just sit there and work it a little bit. I actually want to change the color on something. And I did this once, by the way, with a car driving behind a tree. I had a camera sitting with the tree in the middle. The car drove past the tree, and I had the car actually one color going into the tree and it being another color coming out of the tree. And this is basically how it's done. And don't tell anybody because I told everybody it took me hours and hours to do. But the first thing I'm going to do here is I want to change this red to a whole different color. Now, because of the fact that there are a few things up in here that look around the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and sit there and kind of mask this entire thing off. But let's just change the color and see what happens first before we do that. I'm going to grab chrominance. I'm going to bring it down on the shot right here. I've already got my three-way color correction on here. 
I bring up chrominance again, and once again, I'm going to try the color picker just to see what happens. So I pick that color, and on the inside of the filter right here, notice you've got all your filters that you want to be able to use. This time, I'm going to use the color wheel on the inside of it. Oh, I got out of it. I didn't mean to get out of it. There we go. And now I'm going to go into the setup of my color wheel, and let's see what happens. Wow, look at that. Absolutely nothing. So let's try it again. I'm going to do my color picker. I'm going to try and pick that color red right there. Okay, and let's go into the color wheel again and see what happens. Ah, here we go. Now see, I've changed it into a green, but I haven't gotten everything. So once again, I'm going to say, okay, is that the color I want? No, let's see. Yeah, I want blue. So I'm going to do a blue right there. So I've got this where I want it. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to go in and pick one of my selection tools to be able to select an entire color range. And as you can see, as I pull this out, that I can do it. So basically right here, I have a small problem. And that small problem is, is that I can't do all of it because down here the color gets very, very different. In other words, kind of bland, and it starts to blend in with other things that are kind of darker shades of gray or whatnot in the rest of the shot. So I'm going to have to abandon this and try this a completely different way to be able to get that entire thing in the shot. But we're going to talk about that in conjunction with another filter that we have. But that, guys, basically is the chrominance tool and how to be able to use it, to be able to select either a color or range of colors and then be able to manipulate that color with other filters to where the rest of the shot is just left alone and you're able to do what you need to do with the colors you need to change.